months. We've had such an interesting year. We had a lot of water early, a lot of rainfall, some real heavy rainfall, flooding that compacted our soils and sealed them over. And then now we've had several weeks in places of very hot, dry weather with a lot of crop water demand. And it's really made it interesting to figure out when we need to irrigate. Obviously when it doesn't rain, we're gonna have to irrigate to meet crop water demand, but when we get these small rainfall events or we've had saturated soils, when do we start back up? Makes these decisions challenging. What I think works best for us in our region are using soil moisture sensors to help make those decisions. Any kind of soil moisture sensor works. They're all, in my opinion, the same. They all give you the same information. I personally teach people to start off with watermark sensors. Uh, they are a simple, uh, low-cost tool. They cost about $35 a piece, and you can put them together. You can read them manually with a manual reader like this that costs about $200 or you can spend uh, more money on a telemetry unit that costs maybe $1,000 uh, per unit, uh, but you can see that on your phone or your iPad. You can see it and don't have to walk out in the field to read them. On soybeans, we've done paired, paired studies uh, with farmers on their farms using computerized hole selection, pipe planner, faucet, surge irrigation, and soil moisture sensors. These three tools in soybeans, they reduce water use and save enough water to pay for the equipment. So there's no difference in that returns. Essentially what happens is the energy savings pays for the equipment. In corn, it does more than that. It actually puts money in your pocket anywhere between $25 to $39 an acre more because we're making another six and a half bushels. Even just having a set of four to five manual read sensors, maybe one or two telemetry units across your landscape will really help you understand what's going on in your field, where, is, where are we at in the soil water balance, and when do we need to start back up, and can we wait on a rain. With the sensors, we know how much we have available. We look at rainfall. If we get any rainfall in that time period, we know how, what the difference is. If we get the rain, we're done. If we don't, that's how much we need to finish it out. It's a really simple decision at the very end. So the app's available on the app stores. On Apple, it's the App Store. It's under Arkansas Soil Moisture Calculator or Arkansas Watermark Tool. It's also on Android on the Play Store. You put in your numbers, so the app does all the calculations for you. It counts for the rooting depth, your allowable depletion, how soon do you want to irrigate, how much uh, safety factor do you want to have. It counts for your growth stage. You put your growth stage in, then we know how much you need to finish out, how long your irrigation set time is. So in less than a minute, you can take readings and figure out how much water is left in the profile, and then app goes ahead and automatically calculates how long, when do you need to start your pump up again? So it tells you in three days, or four days, or two days, or 10 days, and also it tells you then how, how much water is gonna be required to finish that crop out for the season. So then you can also predict how many more irrigations you're likely to need. What I always tell people is, uh, when you first put sensors out, I can almost promise you what you think is going on in your field is not what's really going on and the sensors are going to surprise you and you're going to really question whether well, they're working right and you're going to have to kind of rethink and relearn about what you think is really going on in your field and every field's a little different.